Back in 177 AD, a travesty happened right over here. This is the site of the ancient Roman Colosseum, the amphitheater. The amphitheater of the Three Gauls, what people know it now today. Because Lyon was the center of the Gallo-Roman section of the empire. It used to belong to the Gauls until Julius Caesar took over this area of modern-day France implement it into the empire and by the time this was built anywhere between 15 bc to about 15 a.d this was where the romans got their entertainment but unlike the theater we saw on the other hill this is the hill that praised the fauvier yesterday we went over there today we mostly visited la croix russe which is the hill that works right down there in that theater which was also ancient roman built around the same time that one was for performances, for uh, theater, for poetry. But this one was for bloody gladiatorial battles, animals, sacrifices, many horrible things. But in 177 AD, a woman by the mere age of 15 years old was put right in the center of this Colosseum. At first, it was only supposed to house 1,800 people. So the capacity was 1,800 people. But then Emperor Hadrian, who we know as the great builder of the ancient Roman Empire, watch my videos from ancient Rome last year, really awesome uh, places we visited. He expanded this to 20,000 spectators could be here in this Colosseum. This Colosseum was a part of a much larger complex a lot of it is no longer visible. It might be hidden under some buildings or the rest might have already been quarried throughout the centuries. But a 15 year old girl was put on the stake right over here in this Colosseum. Her name was Blandy in French or in, in English or other languages like Spanish, Blandia. Blandy was put here right in the middle of a pack of wild animals, ferocious, carnivorous animals that would tear anyone to pieces. This was the entertainment of the day. And the reason she was put right in the center was because apparently she was accused of cannibalism and incest. But how could a 15 year old girl be responsible for that? These of course were wrong accusations, false accusations. The reason was because she was a Christian. And this was during the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, who put an order saying that if you were a Roman citizen, you would be beheaded immediately. If you were a Christian, if you were not a Roman citizen, well, they would be a bit more lenient for you. They would torture you in the middle of a huge crowd. Well, Blondie was one of these victims. As she was placed in the middle of this Colosseum, the animals approached. People were ready for blood and they knew that they were to tear her to pieces. But for some miracle, the animals encircled her. They did not, not even one nibble. They didn't touch her at all. The Romans were frustrated. What were they going to do? <laughs> Their entertainment uh, did not work for that day. Well, they decided to take more further means. They tortured her by whipping her, putting her in hot grates, and then putting her on a stake for these uh, carnivorous deers. No, not deers, but the bigger ones. Um, very violent. But instead of harming her, instead of impaling her with her with their horns, they decided to just lift her up. Also not killing her, not harming her. The Romans who were attending this were confused. Why weren't these animals killing our entertainment? The only way to put her down was through a dagger. Blondie died. She ended up becoming known as a martyr in early Christianity. And that's why today we have St. Blandy, who's shown in many parts of the city around here. She was one of many other martyrs from the early Christian days that were slaughtered right over here. 
Susie says that's so disturbing. It really is. It really is, unfortunately. Let me pull up. Uh, I have a uh, illustration of Blondie. Here she is at the stake. Apparently many women are actually called Blondie here in Lyon nowadays. It's a popular name. And here's a, a, a stone relief of Blondie in one of the nearby churches. But this was also the site of gladiatorial battles and animal hunts. That would be very normal for the ancient Romans. So you can just imagine this gigantic Colosseum, 20,000 people. Uh, if you saw my Coldplay video, you saw that. That was, uh, I think, uh, around between 40,000 and 70,000. It was a pretty big crowd. So just imagine <laughs> a crowd almost that size right here. It's crazy how this is still surviving today. The amphitheater, the Colosseum with the three goals. Mom. So the last live stream crashed, unfortunately, because uh, I ended up taking a very wrong turn. I ended up going on the boulevard, and the boulevard actually went opposite as to where I was going. So right after that huge rock that we saw, it was only going to be a five-minute walk. No, maybe a little bit longer, about a 10-minute walk to get down here. I unfortunately made a wrong turn, but it was a worthy wrong turn. We tried a good boulangerie. We tried a good butch butcher uh, with uh, that pork pie. And then we had some good wine, so it was a worthy detour. But let's go now to find the passageways, the trabours of here in Lyon, one of the many passageways, upwards of 400 of them. Beautiful views too, so more time the views right there is the basilica we visited yesterday and the eiffel tower look like Has hasrati says i'm back analysis says you're back what a treat yes this is a shorter live video we're going to show you the coliseum and now we're going to go over to the passageways Looks like part of the Bronx says DS. Yeah, yeah, there is a little bit of a Bronx-like atmosphere. Oh, look, another pastorie open. Oh my God, a few cafes open here in the city. What a miracle. So here it is, one of the many famous staircases in La Quarousse, the Red Cross, the neighborhood built by the burgeoning garment industry in the mid 1800s, mostly centered around the silk trade. Now, apparently these streets were open to traffic. <laughs> it's crazy to drive a car down here. Apparently there was a whole lot of accidents and they closed it down for pedestrians. Let me know where you drive down here. Kay says, did your phone overheat? No, I, I got into a dead zone uh, for cell phone reception and it just crashed it was so sad the live stream crashed but i was pretty long ways away so i asked to uh i asked a, a mother and her daughter like the directions uh in the previous live stream they actually gave me good directions um it was of course i don't know french so i didn't understand it fully but what they end up saying is that you can take the bus directly to the to the amphitheater which i end up doing it was also a short walk but it would have been Bit confusing because of the hills but it was only a short bus ride away 10 minute bus ride away so thank you random uh french mother and daughter for the directions all right let's go down this way let's go a little bit up and towards the side Jen says, ooh, that looks steep. Yeah, this used to be open for car traffic. <laughs> I just cannot imagine driving cars here. 
a lot of graffiti in this area as well. Jack says, do a lot of people speak English here? Yeah, there is some proficiency in English. Nowhere near as high as Denmark or the Netherlands. Belgium had a little bit higher. Paris is a bit higher, but you can get by with a little bit of English here. Wow, beautiful street art. Look at that. Susie says, I will ride my bike down. I'll be terrified riding a bike or a scooter down that hill. Ethan says, how do you know all the history? Ethan, I make it up. <laughs> Research. Ethan. Let me go this other way. I use various sources. I did a t walking tour here where uh, the tour guide brushed upon some of the stories here. Uh, I just read deeper into them. And... Um, I use articles, we, uh, encyclopedias online. This time around, no, no books. There's barely that. Many, there, there's barely any podcasts. So sometimes in other cities, it's books and podcasts or documentaries. Wendy says, where are we going? Just one more stop. Show you the Trabors, the passageways, which I think we're coming upon right now. This was actually right by the rock I showed earlier. Is it this one? I don't think it's this one. So I don't fully know my way around. So pardon me. You know, I'm not from the city, so kind of exploring with all of you. I don't think it's this one. Joey says, La Cour de Rosses is coming. Rosses, yeah, that's the one that I'm finding. Who wants to do some uh, tricks with the with the scooter? Go down, parkour our way down. Let me know. Looking a bit seedy around here. Yep, it's a it's a more old school neighborhood.
How's the temperature right now? Still 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, look at all the scooters. I think everyone just gave up on using scooters here. They're like, oh no, <laughs> down these hills. You're walking quite fast. Are you jogging, says Susie? No, I'm not. Susan says you're back. I am. Try to find that Trebilor. Oh my God. Hard to find these passive graves. No wonder <laughs> the Germans had a hard time against the French resistance. Yeah. Wow. Cool building. Look at that. City all to yourself. I think we passed the Trabor. It's one of these. Your shirt matches the graffiti. It does indeed, yeah. Is it this one? No, it can't be this Oh yeah, this is hard to navigate without a uh, GPS. All this is on GPS, so you can get to all these places easily using a GPS, but without GPS, it's, it's a bit hard to kind of find the passageways. So just imagine during World War II, the French res resistance was hiding in these passageways. And you can see the buildings, obviously, but, and uh, we just went through a private one which is under lock and key, but there's many ones that are now public. And that's the one we're trying to find. Wow, so many pigeons. Look at all those pigeons. La Trabours? Everywhere. Everywhere. But what's the, the, the famous one with the lost stairs? La uh, uh, Good question. I think you have to. It's definitely one of uh, this block over here. Yeah, it's yeah. around here. Yeah. But it's not my neighborhood. Okay. okay. I, uh, I can invite you to check on the uh, internet. Okay. You will have a map yes. on, the, uh, on the city. Uh, yeah, so no worries. But yeah, I'll, I'll check online. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. the Office of Tourism. Oh, okay. You perfect. can check a map and there is a lot of uh, indication and the address when you can start your travel around the different travel. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. You're Have welcome. Have a good journey. Bye. Ooh, did, did YouTube crash again? This is neighborhood, so he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah 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 well yeah you know it was helpful <laughs> it is helpful saying that you can find it online yeah wow you know sometimes i pride myself on being very good at navigation but yeah sometimes they're difficult you can see a lot of these have courtyards and we can follow them but these are private ones Yeah, you can see there's a lot of private ones here. A lot of private ones. Namasu says we're powering through. Here it is. Is it this one? I think so.
April says this is rare content indeed, yeah. Nope, it wasn't this one. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I just check Google Maps <laughs> without making the live stream crash, I hope. Um, <laughs> oh, I saw how I wish I can multitask on the phone. It'll be so cool to, to be able to open up both the live stream and, and maps. It'll be cool to have maps integrated into the live stream. That'll be amazing. Um, this is why a bold and bankrupt, you know, might, you might see him uh, kind of find these cool stuff, but they're all using GPS, ultimately. They just edit those points of being lost out. Well, sometimes they have them in and they're adventurous, but generally they edit those out. All right. Alice is bald and bankrupt exposed. <laughs> he, he's one of the few ones that actually keeps in the getting lost bits, but a lot of them do edit them out, of course. But now I tracked it here in, in the middle of this block. Sally, nice to see you here. Welcome. Gary says this is uh, nearly as dangerous for Bolden Bikram. No, 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 it's not. All right, back to this cool building. And it's right around, somewhere around here. So it seems like they have signage. So one of the reasons, another reason they built these passageways, aside from shortcuts, is because these were factories slash tenements back in the mid 1800s for the garment workers. They needed sunlight in order to work throughout the day. It wasn't quite like New York. New York, they didn't care if they had sunlight or not. Here they did. So these passageways enabled the buildings. They could be more cramped, but they would have some sunlight by building these passageways. New York ended up doing that by the early 1900s. Anonymous Sue says there's still beauty to Ladies and gentlemen, I'm human, like many of you. Around trying to find this place and take a wrong turn. And it's 97 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm carrying a book bag and I have a glass of wine. <laughs> I think, uh, I think it happens to anyone. All right. Wow. 
So this is the Trabor. There's more than 400 of them. As I mentioned, John Mulan used these. This is the one of Aras. It means voracious. And that's because these, as I mentioned, are for the workers here. They were called Canutes. And the Canutes, back in the mid 1800s, 1830s, there was a massive uh, downturn in the economy. That sounds familiar, right? As nowadays, we have a lot of Amazon workers, at least in the US, Amazon, Starbucks, Chipotle even, industries and logistic oriented industries now are trying to unionize in America. Same thing happened back then.